can't fit a ride on an animal like this without finding his center. And to find his center, you must go through your own. You must go to where both centers are one. The moment they become two, you're in orbit. I was always wild and reckless, a kind of a free spirit. And uh, I didn't know whether I was going to fit into society. I was really looking for a, a place to, to take that energy and take that excitement. So once I, I, I found rodeo and I found bull riding, uh, it was the perfect scenario, you know, because I love that adrenaline rush. I love the challenge of riding unrideable bulls. And I love the travel, yeah. Always like seeing what was over the next hill. There were some places that were big adventures, you know. And Cheyenne, Wyoming is one of the biggest and oldest rodeos in uh, in the country, and and uh, they used to have a bar there. We called it Friday Night at the Fights. At any night you walk in there, a fight would break out and it looked like the movies where there'd be a hundred people fighting, you know. But nobody pulling knives, nobody pulling guns, just good old fashioned fun fighting, you know. And then they'd break it up and everybody go back to drinking together, you know. But that was, you know, it was just, it was like a bunch of young bulls kind of, you know, um, seeing who the toughest was, you know, and just, it was just the cowboy way. You're living out that John Wayne, you know, type lifestyle, you know, as, as a cowboy, you know. You don't see that anymore. Just changing of the times. If someone has asked me, how would you like to, would you like to still be riding bulls? So I said, I'd like to be young again. I'd be riding them, you know. Because when you're young, everything's magic, you know. The bull knows his job, you know, he's, he's bred the buck. His father and his grandfather did it, you know, and his mother was, you know, out of that great bloodlines too. They're just like racehorses. So they get there, they know their job, you know. So they're, you know, they're just, their heart starts pounding, their adrenaline starts running. You know, they're in go mode just like we are, you know. And uh, so it's, uh, and that gate opens, it's, you know, you'll see one just blow out there and buck like hell, chase the clowns, yet he gets in the back, the back pins back there, you can go in there and scratch him, and, you know, he just like, job's done, <laughs> you know? They're, they're really unique animals, they're cool. There was always great bulls around, you know, and, and um, you admired them. You, uh, some guys made heroes out of them to the point where, uh, in their mind, they become impossible to ride, you know. And I always tell my students, don't hang around with people who, who make a bull sound impossible, you know, because they're going to say, boy, this son buck, he, he's unrideable. He's a killer. He does this. He does that. And they'll tell you all the reasons why you can't ride him. You know, yet you walk over to a winner, you ask him about the same bull, and he goes, oh man, you got him, that's the one I wanted, you know? So it's two different opinions. How you handle that mentally is gonna determine whether you become successful at it or you become a failure at it, you know? And probably 95% of the guys that started out and, and with the intention of riding bulls end up in that failure category because they never conquer the mental side of the game. When you clear your head of all conscious thought, you access the experience of 10,000 lifetimes. There's nothing you don't already know how to do. 
And, and I've been in that state where I just invented moves. And that's that state of being totally out of your conscious mind and over on the unconscious side. You'll amaze yourself once you get over there what happens. It's almost like when my best rise, I felt like I was above myself watching myself. It's almost like an out of a body experience. So when you kind of get into that state, you drop down on the same level as your animal. So he's reading my thoughts. He's picking up on do this, do that. It was, it was weird. But when you get in that right state of mind, things happen. No matter what your problems are in life, it's just like going out and facing that bull every day. Look at what you're up against and then figure a way to make it work. You know, it's like if you're looking at a 1800 pound Mattis Hill bull and he rears high and he has a lot of drop and he's got a lot of power, then there's a spot on that bull that you've seen the, one of the great world's champions get and ride him. And then so you practice, okay, there's how I ride him. I run ride him like he did, you know. So when you meet, you know, you're going to have the advantage. You know, you take that power away from him. You know? But if you just go out there and just hope it's going to happen, then it's probably not going to happen. But that's the way life is, you know. You just hope you're going to be a success. <laughs> Good luck, you know. You, you, you become a success from, from the attitude and the work that you put in. And you see a guy smiling and laughing and giggling and having fun with life. It's usually a success.